So uh, I'm basically going to um, talk about uh, a bunch of different things. People who have heard me talk before actually know things about my character animation work in responsive characters and being able to make characters that move um, based on physics and motion capture. And I continue to do this work. So in essence, I'm doing control work. And uh, this is like virtual robotics to uh, make characters move in more interesting ways, all physically based. Um, but really what I want to talk about in my four and a half minutes left is uh, the um, collaboration that I started with Aaron Seitz in neuroscience, which actually follows nicely from the conversation that just uh, took place, which is in um, doing brain training based on neuroplasticity, the understanding that we can essentially exercise the brain. And so we've been developing a bunch of games to improve uh, the brain through uh, evidence-based neuroscience. So we made a, a number of games so far, and uh, we're essentially following this uh, procedure where we're um, uh, building some uh, research based on his expertise and my expertise and uh, then uh, developing a game off of this and then do subject testing and then iterate and um, we're expe expressly looking at a sort of um, lab to market solution so we're also looking at how to bring this into the market. Um, we had a minor success the other day where we um, uh, successfully completed one of our campaigns um, at experiment.com, if you don't know about this, it's essentially crowdsourcing for experiments. Um, and this is, um, was, was specifically on uh, training for hearing, uh, traumatic brain injury, especially with vets, near blast injuries, um, reveal a specific kind of hearing loss, um, which is actually associated with uh, the, the processing, the central processing for the auditory um, uh, functions of the brain. And uh, this is following a success that uh, my collaborator had in vision, so vision training, basically essentially the optical uh, nerve uh, and all the processing after that, not anything before that, so nothing to do with the optics or the eyeball. Um, and so the training that's happening underneath the hood um, is using something called perceptual learning, and this is something that's uh, coming from neuroscience, and we're uh, developing games to uh, you know, take advantage of the research that's already known. Um, so one of those games is uh, pictured on the left-hand side here. Um, this is essentially a, a game that we call Recall, and it is a memory training game, and there's a couple of plots here that actually show that <coughs> our game is actually doing better than the cognitive testing itself. So the cognitive tests so, show that you can create improvement, but the games show that you can increase engagement and compliance in a way that um, uh, allows the uh, subjects to actually do better. Um, in particular, uh, this top graph is showing uh, that they are able to be more discerning uh, after playing the game um, in comparison to the cognitive test. And then in this other one there, uh, the O span is, is uh, processing under load. So in essence, they can do um, uh, multitasking uh, better after playing the game in comparison to those who were, who were trained on the test itself. So this is just showing that games are actually things that are um, bringing something to the picture uh, to the table, um, even in, in this uh, area, which is uh, pretty well understood. Um, incidentally, uh, this graph actually came from Susan uh, Yegi in uh, at UCI, and she's actually using our game to uh, do a study. Um, so we're doing a parallel study in both uh, campuses to uh, be able to show that we have the, the, the same results in essence. Um, and just a shameless plug, uh, Recall the Game is actually available for an iPad if you want to download it. Um, it actually uh, has some you know, pretty reasonable uh, success and you know, it's still in the beta stages so we're not actually marketing it widely. But if you want to uh, play a, a game to improve your memory, it, it's there. Uh, give us a month, we'll give you a decade as our, as our slogan. <laughs> um, in other uh, parts, we're actually saying um, that uh, there's uh, more to do. This is uh, uh, Games Academy that I started with our extension where people come in, it's sort of like summer camp uh, for one month. Uh, so if you have in, in, interested people, don't have to have any experience, come uh, you know, learn everything that you, you would like about games. We're um, toting Unity and Maya for this uh, version. And uh, two years ago, a um, couple of my students went through this. Uh, they were CS undergrads. Um, they completed this, and then they started this thing that they called Game Spawn. Um, which started in the uh, academic year 2013, and uh, this now has 142 student members, um, the faculty liaison, and essentially it's gamers teaching games to games to gamers, and they're artists and females, and I'm proud of that. And they're actually affiliated with another UCI component, which is called the campaign. I don't know if people know that, 
um, but in essence the campaign and uh, GameSpawn have been in communication. Um, and then one last piece in my last five minutes, just, just because I think this is totally weird, I went up and said something about um, uh, uh, YouTube and they, they said, oh, we learn about new games through YouTube and I thought, wow, that's, a, that's such a strange, you know, today. And uh, eventually one of the students pulled me over and said, well, I got to show you this since you made this comment. Um, they make this thing called Instalock and it's essentially got um, over uh, one million subscribers. Um, and this is one of their videos which went viral. This is essentially a pop music song with new lyrics played against League of Legends backdrops. <coughs> and it, this one was released in December and has about three million views. And you can see the list down the side here. I mean, this isn't really to do with me, but just the idea that this is happening gave me this sense of generation <coughs> gap all over again. And I thought it would be fun to actually point it out and say, you know, go, go look up Instalock and, uh, you know, and, and see how the kids are doing it these days. Um, and that's all I had to say, so I don't know if I spent five minutes or not. Six. Six. <laughs> Questions for Victor? I'm, I'm going to be uh, leaving about midway through lunch, so if you do want to talk, it's uh, great to capture me at the beginning of lunch. Right. So just one question, which is, um, like, how do you like design a game so that you like have a plausible chance that it actually will improve like brain function as opposed to sort of just hoping for the best? Or? Sure. So there are specific tasks that they uh, know do um, affect um, specific brain uh, brain functions, and so we're weirdly pigeon uh, holding these as the <coughs> game mechanics. And then we're building things that are interesting around them. In particular, the things that game designers do well are um, including engagement and uh, you know exciting people, pulling them in, um, increasing the challenge in the appropriate level so that people never feel bored or never feel overwhelmed. And so those are the kinds of things that we're building in. But there's a number of other things that I'm really using my intuition about, which is saying things like, uh, you know in order for us to have transfer, we have to have something which is complex enough. So if you isolate everything and only do the task, then you're not going to be able to do it in the real world because you never get the opportunity to isolate everything. And so you have to be able to do this under load. Even if that means you do more poorly, you can actually do uh, it in, in, a, in an environment like this or in an environment where you're driving, for instance. <coughs> um, that said, I also want to say that a lot of research in neuroscience is actually just simply looking at off-the-shelf games and showing that things like uh, Portal actually give you better um, uh, spatial reasoning skills, better determination skills, and a few other things than Lumosity, which is the sort of toted, uh, you know, standard for doing brain training. Um, so what we're seeing is that action uh, video games in particular do increase specific cognitive functions, being able to track objects, be able to increase your peripheral um, attention, and also to do uh, executive function changes that aren't necessarily designed in, but we can reverse engineer because the games themselves are repeatable across um, action video games and they contrast to games like Tetris. You don't actually get the same benefit from Tetris. So it's po possibly a very interesting area to look at, but there are things that we can, we can um, expect to draw from. Okay, great, cool. thank you very much.